MMA Fight Corner. This is Heidi Fang and Phil Devine for MMA Fight Corner speaking with Liz Carmouche, women's bantamweight and former Marine Liz Gorilla, fighting Alexis Davis at UFC Fight for the Troops. That's November 6th on Fox Sports 1. Liz, so we're very uh, happy to see you back here. This is your third time in the Octagon. How honored are you to be on this card with your history as a Marine? I'm really honored. Um, I know that really the influence and the impact of it, the fight for the troops and everything that they do to bring in boost morale for the military. So now to be a part of that is a huge honor. And you're also, you know, with your background, full of firsts with the UFC, one of the first women to fight in the octagon, one of the first to come out as being openly gay, one of the first women in the UFC with the military background. Uh, what has this meant to you to have this experience in the UFC and how much has it really changed your life? It changed my life, my life in so many different ways. Um, having been that in that first fight for the UFC, that was a dream come true. And so now it's just a matter of building new dreams and accomplishing new things in my life and just evolving. And to have achieved that is just a huge thing for me. And what do all those firsts mean to you, to have all of those and to kind of make your mark inside the octagon? It's crazy. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's really what it is for me. <laughs> never thought I would be that person. Just dreamt about it, but never really thought it would be a reality. And your military experience, I know that you know you were a Marine, you worked on helicopters in your time serving. Uh, what does that mean to you to have that and to take it into the octagon for the troops and being able to somewhat support and give back to the uh, the troops? It means a lot. I know that um, it's not necessarily my own roots. It's not like I'm putting on a show for the Marines. It's for the Army. But it still means a lot just to be able to be there for them and to, to be doing this. And I just hope that I can influence them and boost their morale in the ways that it did for me when I was in. Well, speaking of when you were in, what has it done, what did the military do for you? I mean, you know, we do see a lot of fighters that have the military background talk about how being in the cage really isn't uh, that scary or that much combat for them, considering what they've seen in the past from the military. No, I, I definitely agree with that, st that statement. It, um, Nothing can compare to the time that you spend in the military and the experiences that you have. But it's, it's a whole different animal in itself. It, I mean, it, you really can't compare the two. Um, and, uh, I mean, yeah, you can't. <laughs> Well, speaking of comparing the two, I mean, you fought you fought all over uh, in many uh, organizations around the country. What about comparing that to the UFC? I mean, we had talked about it for years, where there there was the no real opportunity for the women to make it in the UFC, and now they are. And not only are they making it, they're kind of stealing the show in every uh, every time they're on a card. Uh, what's that been like? And and what's the comparison to fighting in the UFC compared to elsewhere? Uh, fighting in the UFC is, is a pioneering experience, and it's a dream come true. And I think for, for women, one of the reasons that they do so well and they do end up stealing the show is because for every time they go in there, we're having to prove ourselves and we're having to put on a better performance than, than we did before. Whereas I think for everybody else, it's just going in there doing their thing, but for us, we have to prove it to everyone. So we work that much harder. And as a result, we end up putting on a great show. Well, you certainly do. I mean, it's it's kind of crazy that every time there's a woman's uh, card uh, or fight on the card, that's the one I usually end up looking forward to the most and the one that I'm usually never disappointed with, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> it, it's, it, it's, been, it's been great to watch, you know, in uh, the, the women's rise in MMA. What are your thoughts on the impact it's had in the last few years? It's been crazy to watch it evolve. I know I haven't been in the fight game nearly as long as most of the other people in the top 10 division have, but in the few short years that I've been doing this, to see how much it's changed, it's just, it re it's really just crazy. Uh, just watching the skill sets, watching the shows themselves as they evolve, incorporating women and trying to build that up, and seeing an amateur division start to grow where there wasn't one before. It's, it's been pretty amazing. Well, what are your thoughts on this season's tough? You just mentioned that uh, this show. What are your thoughts on what's been going on? I actually haven't, I don't watch television. <laughs> at all? At all. No, not at all. Wow. Well, what do you think about this then? I don't know if you, if you know, but most of the girls without the experience of the most of the veterans on the show are the ones that are, are coming out on top. And it seems like we're, 
I don't know if we're at that point where we're passing the torch, um, but the the girls that nobody really heard of are the ones that are are really dominating, and it's been uh, it's been really impressive to watch. You know, it, it makes sense. Um, now you can watch MMA, and they actually have it in high schools as a program. That that's, was never available before, and that blows my mind. So you can certainly see how people are coming up, and they can go through their youth training in MMA. I teach an MMA class, and we start off at four years old and, and go up from there. So if they can do that starting off at that age when it wasn't available to the rest of us, then of course they're going to have the upper hand. By the time that they hit 18, 19, when they can actually fight professionally, they have far more experience than any of us. So as you head into this fight here against Alexis Davis, what do you see as far as her advantages or disadvantages go against you? I think we match up uh, really well. It's really just going to come down to who has the most heart and who's not willing to give up. Were you able to see her first fight in the octagon, and what did you take away from that? I did. You know, it was a tough fight, um, but Alexis, as usual, goes in there and just throws down and is an unstoppable force. <laughs> And that's what I took away from it. You can't take her lightly. If you think you're just going to go over there and just mull her over and beat the crap out of her, you got something else coming. You've been very active, Liz, also with the uh, community since. And I, I've always noticed that you've been very active. But with the UFC, you've kind of taken the platform to really be able to do more. Um, you're doing the HIV awareness campaign. There's the self-defenses classes I see you tweet about all the time that you teach. Um, do you have anything special planned as far as... Uh, what you may do for the troops as far as putting on anything for them during this week as opposed to just having a kick-ass fight? Uh, I don't know that I have enough time to. I know we'd kind of hope to after the fight, but that's still in the works, and uh, we'll still see if it happens. If it is, it, we do have some big things planned. Well, great, Liz. Uh, we really wish you all the best of luck in there, and we look forward to seeing you in your third women's UFC bantamweight bout when you take on Alexis Davis. Uh, it's November 6th on Fox Sports 1 for UFC Fight for the Troops. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.